And so we just done the one of the Wassail songs. We're going to sing through the other three songs so you've all got them in your head. And then by the time we get to Pebblemill Fields, you'll be sick of them. About 20 times each. So, so um, some, some people here know that you probably will get them. They, they come really good. So, old apple tree, we Wassail thee and hope that thou shalt bear. For the Lord does know where we shall be from out another year. For to whom I do there, shall every ever see. Let every man take off his hand. And shout out to the old apple tree. For to whom I do there, shall every letter see. Let every man take off his hand. And shout out to the old apple tree. farmer when he came to look at that old gnarled bent apple tree that was rooted into the ground there in the middle of the great orchard which he looked after and his father before him had looked after and his father's father before had looked after because that orchard had been passed down through the generations but that old apple tree the one that had been planted by his grandfather so many years before was no longer bearing apples. Oh. And I know all oh. <laughs> oh. the apple tree. Oh. <laughs> oh. I know. <laughs> and in those times, 
everything had to have a use. Because yeah, it, as you know, as we all know, everything had to be useful. If a tree was no longer bearing fruit, or an animal was old, like a cow, that would be the end. That would be the end, exactly. <laughs> da -da, the end. And as he looked at that old apple tree that was rooted into the ground, that had been there for so many years, but no longer bore the apples, he thought, hmm. That would make me a mighty fine tree, a chair, if I chop it down. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> that will put some wood into the hearth, because it, uh, in these days, like this morning, <gasps> wasn't it cold? <laughs> it was yeah. cold. No central heating. And no central heating. <laughs> Everything, everyone lived around the great fireplace in the kitchen or the parlor. And that, and they would all huddle together. And that was also a time when they would tell stories. But on this occasion, they were not going to tell stories. For what the poor farmer had forgotten was that that old, bent, twisted apple tree was the home to the apple tree man, who had looked after his family, who had looked after the orchard for all those years. It was also the home to the birds that sing in the branches and make the nests in their homes and the branches above. It was also the home to the insects that would come and gather up the pollen to take to eat every apple blossom so that apples would grow. That's what he forgot. So he decided that the very next morning he would go down and he would chop that apple tree down. <gasps> Poor farmer, poor apple tree. <laughs> but you know what, Bert? You know what happens when there's a little whisper in the air, that little flutter of a voice, that little tickle in the ear. I don't even have to tell you side of it yet. <laughs> the birds and the insects all curl up into the ear of the old apple tree man and said, "Oh, apple tree man!" The poor farmer is going to chop you down, chop your home down, and it is our home too. <laughs> Do you think he was a happy guy? No. 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 Oh, he wasn't. And he decided that he would pay that poor farmer a visit that very night. <laughs> so, there, as the farmer was lying peacefully asleep. In his bed. Oh, you could actually do snoring, couldn't you? <laughs> the apple tree man, well, he had that way about him because he was magical. He was a spirit. He entered into the old poor farmer's dreams. And there he came to rest. And the poor farmer, well, suddenly he found himself wide awake, outside, in the orchard, at night. Oh, 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 it was a bit cold, wasn't it? And there, he was right opposite the apple tree, the old twisted apple tree that was the home to the apple tree man. And there, he heard that muttering, that whisper, through the branches. And he thought he wanted to go home and get back into a snuggly bed. But then he heard a voice and he saw a face through the branch. But it wasn't a scary face. I hope mine's not scary. <laughs> it wasn't a scary face. It was a face of an old, old, old man whose skin was the bark of the tree, whose eyes were the bright apple pips that you find in the apple. And he has old, old face. And he had a crown of apple blossoms on his head. And he said to the old farmer, this is my home, this tree. And you are going to chop it down? This is, I know. No, mm, 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 it ain't gonna happen. I'll tell you that now, it ain't gonna happen. Because this is also the home to the birds that make their nests high up in the branch of the tree by the twitter and twitter and whistle in the branches. <laughs> in the the fold, they're home to the fold in the bar. 
Scott, she said, calm down. Tomorrow morning, there will be a surprise. Dun, dun, dun. Surprise in the tree. And before you know it, boom, the old farmer was back in his bed. And there, it was early morning, and he could see the light was coming through the windows. And he thought, what on earth happened last night? And then he remembered the words of the old apple tree man. And with that, he jumped out of bed, he got washed and dressed, ran down the stairs, didn't even have a bite of breakfast, picked up his axe from the front <gasps> door. Ooh, we still think it's going to be a bad ending for the apple, apple tree, don't we? And he shot out through the door, across the yard, into the orchard, where he made his way over to where the old apple tree was, right in the middle of the orchard. As he went, came closer because he heard a humming in the air. Then he could get louder and louder and louder. And he could see something glinting, gold and yellow in the early morning light. And when he got there, he saw that a branch had fallen off the tree and there was a hole in the side of it. And he could see as he looked inside that there was a beehive. And there were all these bees. And there was honeycomb. And it was all dripping with honey. And he managed to put his finger through the hole, scoop up some honey. And when he tasted it, ooh, did it taste sweet? Is that honey sweet? Ooh, is that honey sweet? Ooh, no. Is that honey sweet? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was gorgeous. Yum. And he looked at that old apple tree. And he thought, you know that old apple tree has a use after all. Hey. 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 Oh, I'm not gonna chop you down. He said to the old apple tree man, I'm not gonna chop your home down. You can stay. You win. Hey. Hey. that he could see the apple tree winking at him. Oh. Thank you very much. You've been a great audience. Thank you, Sharon. We're going to proceed slowly now down to the crossing, but we'll all wait at the crossing so we can all cross together. We'll hold the lights and just go out the block. Turn up Cecil Road. Yeah, we're we'll going to stop the traffic. I just love that. I just love that. I just love that. I just love that.
Right, the second story I will be telling you also concerns the apple tree man, but it also concerns our riddle. Oh. Oh. Now, you might guess, as I'm telling the story, what the riddle is all about, because it's a little red house with no windows, no doors, and a star that lights it up inside. Concerns a little boy called Tommy. He always had a little boy called Tommy in a story. And he and his mom had moved from the city to the countryside to look after his grandma. Because this was during the time of COVID and during the time of the first lockdown. Oh, I'm so sorry to remind you. Boo! His, his, his. But his grandma was getting on in years. And there was nobody around to help her. And, oh, it breaks your heart. It really does. In a home. In a home. No, not in a home. Yes, but in a home. No. She had that thing that happens to us all that happens happening to me. As I am gradually aging, your joints become stiff. And when you've been lying in bed all night long, oh, to move your arm, to move your leg, to move your body, well, that is painful. And that does not put you in the best of tempers, I can tell you that now. Because when Tommy and his mother went to live with their grandma, and his mother would be helping her get out of bed, all Tommy could hear from that bedroom was, oh, my joints hurt, Sarah. That was the name of her, his mother. Oh, I haven't slept a wink all night last night. Oh, 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 oh. And when Tommy sometimes might be laughing, or might be running up and down the hallway, out from that bedroom door would come. Tommy, stop it! You are making noise! Oh, getting on my nerves! Because for Tommy, all his grandma was old and she was grumpy and she was bad tempered. And so he had nothing to do with her. Oh, no. But you can imagine being out there in the countryside. Well, there's only so many times that you can ride your bike up and down the lane. There's only so many times when you can go playing football in the back garden by yourself. There's only so many times when you can just do face time with your friends and do your school lessons. And needless to say, Tommy got really, really bored. So one day, he went up to the room where his mother was working, because she was always busy working from home, taking care of the house, taking care of her mother, Tommy's grandmother. And Tommy banged on the door. And he said, as the door opened, Mom, I'm bored! <laughs> oh, and his mother said, Tommy, what? Try and do something. But he said, no, I'm bored. I don't want to live here anymore. Grandma is so old and she's always grumpy and she's always bad tempered. Can't we go back to the city? And his mother said, no, we can't. We have to stay here. We have to look after Grandma. But, she said, I have an idea. You like riddles, don't you? Ooh. Do you like riddles? Do you like riddles? I do. You do? Do you like riddles? Do we all like riddles? Yeah! So, she said to Tommy, I have a riddle. I want you to bring back the answer to me. And the riddle is, what is a little red house, no windows, no doors, and has a star that lights it up inside? I think we might know the answer already, but no, okay. Well, let's find out, shall we? Well, Tommy said, oh, wow, that's really great. Oh, I love riddles, but what is it? <laughs> what is it? I'm, I'm, can you help me? And his mother said, no, I'm busy. As she opened up the laptop, I've got a meeting. But I tell you who can help you. Your grandma could help you. Oh. Was Tommy happy about that? No? 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 Was it happy?
No, he wasn't happy about his grandma because to Tommy she was always oh. Oh. and she was always Money. yeah, and she always had a bad temper. Oh. Exactly. Money breath. <laughs> oh dear, poor grandma. <laughs> anyway, he went down the stairs and he thought, oh, he knew she was in the living room with her knitting, sat next to the fire. So he opened the door and there she was, quietly knitting. And when she looked up, she smiled at him. Oh, thank goodness. So she said, hello, Tommy. What can I do for you? And he went up to her and felt really, really brave. And he said, oh, Grandma, I have this riddle that, that Mom gave to me. And he told her, little red house, no doors, no windows, and a star that lights it up inside. He said, Grandma, what do you think that could be? Oh. Well, Grandma, though she was wise and had lived on this earth for many, many years, she didn't know the answer. And she said, oh, Tommy, I don't know, but I tell you who could help you. Mm. Who, he said. <laughs> who, exactly. Good answer. Who? Yes. So, and she said, the apple tree man lives in the old apple tree down at the end of the back garden. And my father was planted that, your great grandfather, when we first moved into the house. Whenever I had a problem, said your grandma, I would always go down, stand underneath the apple tree, and I'd say, apple tree man, apple tree man, can you help me please? Well, Tommy said, okay, yeah, yeah, I'll go down. So he ran out of the living room, ran out of the kitchen, out to the back door, down the back path, and there he came to the old apple tree, which like in the first story was twisted and bent, and it was actually been rooted into the ground for many, many years. And he stood underneath the branches, and he heard the birds twittering in the branches above, and he felt the sun on his face, and he said, oh, apple tree man, apple tree man, can you help me, please? And he could see that there were some red apples hanging from the branches above. And all of a sudden, the tree began to shimmer. The tree began to tremble. The tree began to shimmer. And out of the apple, what landed in his hand was a red apple. Oh, that is what landed in his hand. The apple tree had given him an answer. So he was so excited, he ran back. But as he ran back, he began to think about little red house, no doors, no windows. It was an apple! What about that star inside, hey? He got to that piece. What about the star inside? So, he went running into the living room where his grandma was waiting for him, and he said, Grandma, Grandma, it's an apple. The little red house with no doors, no windows. But what about the star inside? <laughs> he said, I tell you what, Tommy, let's go into the kitchen and we'll find out. Give me my walker. So he gave the walker and she pushed herself out of the armchair, grabbed hold of the walker, and slowly made her way into the kitchen, where she sat down at the kitchen table. She put the walker at the side and she said to Tommy, go to the drawer, get the knife, and get the shopping board, and bring it back to me, which he did. And when he gave it to her, she then got hold of the apple, like this. She got the knife, and she put it on the chopping board, 
and she cut it down the center. And the apple split open, Woo! and inside was a star. A star that lights up the apple inside. And after that, Tommy and Grandma were the best of friends. And you can see a little bit of a star. It's not much of a star, but a star. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to a little bit more music from those voices. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.